that, so twists part three. Uh, okay, let's do like a short recap first um, on twists. So uh, what is the definition of the twist in its four by four matrix form? Like if I write this, hat, And first off, what is what are all the uh, the subscripts and superscripts? What is this I? Body, body, body. body frame. Okay. Uh, the J. Base. Base. Okay. Expressed and expressed. Okay. Then, what is how is it defined? Transform from. So there's gonna be three H's, right? Yeah, H. H, H dot. H dot, good. And uh, H. H. So, all the superscripts and subscripts. K, J. Let, let's, let's start with uh, the middle one. H dot. J, I, K. I, or I to J. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I to J. Yeah, because uh, it's body with respect to base. So, so this uh, the, the H dot, the thing that's moving, is this I with respect to J. Okay. And then the first one should be J to K. Uh, yeah. J to K, all right. Because the J always needs to match up, and K is all that's left. Yeah. And then and the I to, uh, K to I. Yeah. So I, K, J, J, I, I, K, and then K, K. Yeah. Doesn't that just cancel? I uh, don't know. No. So there's this. Uh, this is an H dot. Oh, okay. it's, uh, it's not one big transform. Uh, all right. So and that's a matrix in R four by four, and you can write that out. It turns out to look like this: omega hat k j i v k j. Zero, three by one, zero. Where this is like the angular part, and this is the linear part, and we already showed uh, like the geometric interpretation of it all, and then you can just concisely write this in a 6D vector form as T K J I equals omega. And again, this hat thing for uh, three by uh, for a three by one vector means that it's the skew symmetric matrix form of it. All right, uh, so that's the definition. Then some properties that were really useful. All right, who can tell me one? J K. Comma J. Just, just first, what does it do? What does it do? Um, the you just describe it. The flip base and body. Okay. Let's negate. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's call that inversion of base and body. And then you set T K J I is what. Minus T K I J. Okay, good. So that's really simple. Then we had addition. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do addition. All right. Uh, so let's do three frames. Uh, let's do four frames even. M K J I uh, and let's suppose we know T M uh, K J and we know T M J I then since they're expressed in the same frame we can add them up and, and also since this J 
the, the body frame here matches the base frame here, so it makes sense to add them up. Uh, so the, when you add those two together, you get in the same frame again, from K all the way to I. All right, so that's a really important one. And then the last one. On the same body. On the same? Yeah, yeah, okay, let's, yeah. Yep. Uh, all right, so uh, T, I, K, J equals zero. If uh, K and J uh, attach to the same body. Yeah. So if there's no motion between two frames, then the twist is zero. Um, and then we actually had a fourth one. Change frame? Changing frames. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, I'm just going to write down the one. In, in the 60, uh, sorry, yeah, the 60 vector form. And so there's also a way to do this operation on the four by four matrix, but here I'll just write down on this, which is the one you'll use the most. T M J I equals this adjoint matrix of the transform from, uh, let's, let's do, so we have a vector uh, twist expressed in frame K, K, J, I. So we're going from frame K to frame M, where this adjoint H, M, K was six by six vector uh, matrix. Uh, R, M, K, zero, B hat, M, K, R, M, K, R, M, K. So it's like you're rotating the angular part and then rotating the velocity plus adding this, this cross product uh, part based on the angular velocity. All right. So that's the definition and a couple of the properties. So uh, let's pray play around with some code that basically implements all of this. Um, so, that's, I uh, created a project called Twist Stuff, uh, and in the properties, in the build path, I just added IGMC utilities, and that contains all of the screw theory twist based stuff. And I created a class called twist stuff, and this is the main function. So let's first just create a bunch of reference frames. Uh, so let's see, we need a, a world frame. Oops. Wow, that's a small shift. But <laughs> Reference frame world equals new, or sorry, equals just that. Whoa! <laughs> did that, how did that happen? The mouse is really close to the mm -hmm. end, is. Alright, let's just do this. Is reference frame dot get world frame. So that's like the parent frame of all reference frames. Uh, then let's create another one. Reference frame, frame A. Equals uh, reference frame dot construct. Construct a body frame with unchanging transform to parent. Uh, let's call this guy... Maybe unchanging translation is easier to do. What's that? Unchanging translation, do we have to do? Unchanging translation, oh, that's, that's okay. Um, 
So the name of this frame is going to be frame A. Is it a keyboard issue or a Windows user issue? A keyboard issue, because the shift is uh, like the, the up arrow is where the shift uh, should be. The shift key is really small. All right, so the, um, the parent of this frame is going to be world. And then the transform to parent, I'm going to use this uh, uh, thing called uh, random tools. Oh, damn it. <coughs> I bought that keyboard anyway. <laughs> I wonder. All right, so I'm just going to create a random transform to parent. Random tools dot uh, generate random uh, transform. And for that, I need a random, so I'm going to create a random. Yeah, but it's set to use the uh, like 220 character uh, line thing. Uh, Java, no matter. Edit. Uh, 160. It's control shift Just F. Yeah. Do it. Just save it. Is that a build error? Mm. There's a build error. It's on. Uh, There's a build error. It doesn't. Yeah, you, you have to hit apply. Uh, oh. I need to add. Uh, oh, the. Sorry. Uh, need to add the Java 3D library. Mm. Add library. Add libraries. That's it. bracket as well. Alright, there you go. So we have our frame and then we can just create a twist. <coughs> Peter, is there just like a wireless USB wire so that you can use any keyboard you want? Uh, so let's take this destructor over here. You have a box to plug it. All right, so we so have there's like wireless hubs. We have the Something body frame. We should, we should get one of those and you can use any a keyboard. Yeah, Base frame in the world. And just get a bigger keyboard. And then but everyone the has their own favorite keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, linear velocity and angular velocity. So, and since we're expressing this twist in its body frame, the linear velocity and angular velocity sort of make 
more sense because uh, the linear velocity is just the linear velocity of the origin of frame A. So here, let's let's just do uh, a random vector again. Um, so that's uh, random tools. Does this one work? No. Mm -hmm. Who broke it? Generate random vector. Random. And then here, another one. So now we have a twist. Could you say again what order the, the three? So you got frame A, world, frame A. It's arguments. Yeah. Oh, twist. Arguments, sir. Sure. Uh, let's see. So that's uh, so it's this guy. So the body frame comes first. Okay. So it's, it's basically the order is uh, the twist of frame A with respect to world expressed in frame A. So it's body-based expressed in? Yeah. It's, it's basically the order in which you would pronounce the whole sentence, you know? Uh, okay. So that's a, that's a twist. And then let's just uh, system that out. <coughs> so this uh, Twist one. All right. That gives us, uh, if you just sys out a twist, it'll tell you all of the necessary information. So all of the frames, and then the actual numerical values of the linear and angular part. So uh, let's look at that first property, uh, inversion of base and body. So you can just do twist one dot invert, and then Let's sys out that thing again. Sys out twist one. Was it control F11? Mm -hmm. All right, so after we did that. It this became, one works now. OK. After we did that, it became the twist of the world with respect to frame A. So that's sort of what we expected. And the frame in which it was expressed uh, didn't change, so that's nice. And uh, so it should be all negated. And if you take a good look, see that all the minus signs are to uh, that's okay. change the minus sign. Yeah. All right. So that's our first property. Then, mm, all right, let's, let's do uh, addition. So if we want to add two twists <laughs> together, then we need three frames, right? Because we need uh, frame the, the twist of one frame with respect to another, plus yet another the twist of yet another frame with respect to one of the frames. So let's let's uh, do that. Create another frame first. We just copy that code right now on the whiteboard. Control C. So the parent's still going to be the world frame. It's fine. All right, and uh, let's let's actually make this. Uh, be a method that I can reuse. Uh, create a random twist. Move to random tools. No. Yeah, I think I think that already exists somewhere. A lot of this stuff already exists. All right, so so this is a uh, inversion of body and base. Then let's do addition. So let's make another twist. Twist two is create random twist. All right, so the the base. I should rename that. The base frame is going to be, let's actually not make it very easy for ourselves, because like the easy thing to do would be to make this, make the, the, the base frame of this be 
frame, uh, or the world frame, I guess, right now. Uh, There's a reference frame. What's that? So the world frame, not the reference frame? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Um, all right, let's, let's do... You have to change the function to add an extra frame, I would assume. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, all right, let's just do um, frame B here. And then random and frame A. Okay. Um, and let me actually uh, rename some of the arguments of that method. So that's nicer. So now we have another twist. And then let's do uh, twist one. Oh, I called it just twist. Let's call it twist two. One dot add twist two. All right, let's see what happens. And print it out. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I saw. Are there type checking and adding twists? Yes. I mean, frame check? Yes. That's what I'm going to show, show you. Uh, twist one. So this, this adds it in place. It doesn't return anything, it just backs twist one by adding twist two. Uh, all right, let's run that. Control F11. Hey, red text. It says that uh, frame B does not match world. So let's take a let's take a look at what we're trying to do here. So at this point, after we've inverted twist one, uh, it is so the twist of well expressed in uh, it's expressed in frame A. Oops. And it's the the base frame is uh, frame A again. And the body frame is world. Okay. And then this twist two. Uh, what is that? Oops. That's the twist expressed in frame, frame A. No, oh, frame B, yeah. Um, and then of frame B. Uh, sorry, um, with respect to frame B, or frame A. So do you guys see what's wrong here? So they, they're ex expressed in the same frame, so that's good. Mm -hmm. But you're trying to add a, f a twist with respect to frame B to a twist with respect to frame, or yeah, with respect to frame A. Um, so let me, can we pan back? Then I'll write it down here. All right, so, so really what, we're, what we were trying to do is D, uh, A, A, W plus D, A, B, A. So that, that obviously doesn't make sense because uh, here the body frame is world and here the base frame is body. So you can't add those together. So what could we do to make this into something that, that does work? Like how, how can we, for example, so uh, we have, we, have the, uh, uh, we have, we want to know, for example, the twist of uh, body of, of B with respect to the world. How do we calculate that? If, if you invert both, it should be no, invert either. either. A, uh, B, yeah, yeah. 
for both of them. W equals. Which one comes first? D A. What does it this need to be? W. W. Uh, yeah, w. Okay. A. A. Because we have that if we just invert this yeah. plus D. A. 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 B. Okay, good. Yeah, but the top one should be legal. The top one should be legal? Mm, not necessarily. Didn't we talk about it yesterday? Um, Where it doesn't really matter? Yeah. yeah or it was since, the order since, that in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it doesn't allow that. Yeah, so it, it's a little bit too strict in that sense. Or you oh, can flip them around instead of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can uh, flip the. You, do, you can do twist two oh. dot add twist one. Should also work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you go the first T A A W? That's the twist of of the world with respect to A expressed in frame. And that's the same. That matches that notation that you have there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So superscript. So it's basically like a late latex notation. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, you need to invert on the verb time if you do it like this. Sorry, in, in third one? The top one yep. should result in T A comma B W. Yeah. And so so that's like the inverted version of this. Yeah. 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 So let's let's do uh sure let's let's do the one that uh Jesper uh, proposed. So that's uh twist two add twist one and we, sh we should kind of fix this but it also reduces the uh, intuition you have in all of this I think no I think it, I think it's fine to force it to yeah to be in a certain order to be in the order yeah mm -hmm. all right so let's uh, let's do this so this mm -hmm. was saying at least this should work you should do a print twist yep. two. Uh, of world with respect to frame a you have to print this print two. Twist two. Oh, sorry. So now we have of world with respect to frame B expressed in frame A, and then let's uh, you can also subtract or not? Yeah. Uh, but so first let's let's try to get the result we wanted. So we invert this. Now it's frame B with respect to world, expressed in frame A. And then, as a final thing, you can uh, change frame. Twist to dot change frame to frame B, for example. All right. Do you have a subtract command? Yeah. Okay. So now we have this twist of frame B with respect to the world expressed in, did I screw it up? Yes. Expressed in frame B, yeah. Uh, okay, so now. So the change frame, change, change body frame, no relative twist and change base frame. They don't do anything, right? They just change the frame. Um, because if they're attached to the same body, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. Really, what what they're doing is they implement this. So if you know that there's no uh, twist between k and j, mm -hmm. and you have uh, a twist of frame k, then you also know the twist of frame j. Yeah. Uh, so so that you don't so that you don't so have to like create a, a zero twist and add it to the thing. It's sort of a convenience thing. Yeah. But it is kind of dangerous because. Uh, if the twist between those frames is not zero, then you can screw stuff up. Uh, screw stuff up. Yeah. All right. So uh, one more thing. So let's say we want to uh, compute the velocity of a point fixed in frame B. We can do that with this method. Twist two dot. Uh, sorry. Uh, 
check uh, velocity of point fixed in body frame. All right. So we need a frame vector to pack, and we need to know which points we're talking about. Uh, all right, so the frame vector to pack is control one. It's, yeah, okay, local variable. Saving the result in the yeah. Metric to pack. Very yeah. We we often do this to pack thing to um, to make it so that programs don't have to generate garbage all the time. Because otherwise you'd be creating a new vector every time you calculate something like this. A new vector three D, which you probably won't need uh, the next control tick because it's out of date. So it's gonna be garbage and that's uh, garbage bad. Okay. Yeah. All right, so it's a new frame vector, and it's the thing is it needs to be expressed in the base frame. So in uh, twist two dot get base frame, so you can also just programmatically ask a twist for uh, what its base frame, its body frame, and expressed in frame are. Uh, then the points. Oops, that is how intelligent does it. Right, new frame points. Uh, let's say it's going to be. Uh, I think that also has to be expressed in frame. In twist two, I'll get base frame. Body frame too, right? Uh, yeah, but that should be body frame, frame isn't it? Well, if it's fixed in body frame. Yeah, it's fixed in body frame, but you can just change frame it to any other frame. And I think the, the formula requires it to be in, in uh, base frame. I'll, I'll show you okay. in a second. Uh, and then let's do another just random vector. Tools dot generate random vector. This is not going to work yet uh, because the twist two also needs to be in base frame. But let's try. It'll just tell you. So if anything, all of this stuff is too conservative in terms mm -hmm. of reference frame checks. And sometimes it's just conservative because uh, otherwise it will would be sort of hidden um, uh, hidden computation that happens. That requires that memory requires generation. A lot of yeah, the required variables. Frames. Yeah. It, yeah, it could be made more convenient, but that would mean that there's more chance uh, for the programmer to make a program that's yeah. not as efficient as it could be. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, arguments frame frame B does not match world. So these these uh, messages could be improved also at some point. But let's just see what uh, it's try trying to check. So the, the base frame of the twist is going to be is, is uh, being compared to the expressed in frame. Those should be the same for this formula to work. So let's do uh, twist two dot change frame to twist two dot get base frame. Now let's try that. Yeah, now it works. Let me just output the result. That frame vector to pack is really just the velocity. Oops, of point fixed in frame B uh, expressed in world. Uh, yeah, so expressed in world is. Kind of redundant because it's a frame vector. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't, I shouldn't use that notation, but just to be very explicit. Right. Well, it's but it's also with respect to the world. 
Yeah, and also with respect to the world. So world is considered uh, what's fixed, and then frame B is moving with respect to world. And um, since this point is fixed in frame B, it's also going to be moving with respect to world, and, and this is its velocity. Can you show what you did all here in this computation on the board? Yeah. So we had this point, uh, let's call it R, and we, it was initially expressed, let, let's uh, say DDT of R in B is zero. So it's body, it's uh, fixed in, in uh, B's reference frame. Uh, and then, uh, just the kinematics are R A equals, well, let's do R A 1 equals, uh, no, we, we were going to do it in world, is um, H W uh, to B, or B to W, I should say, times uh, R B one. Then the DDT of this. So we want to know the the velocity. So uh, DDT of this vector. Equals H dot W B. RB1 plus uh, HWB times R dot B1, uh, but that's nothing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, I, I should write it down, or does it matter? No. Yeah. I guess not. Um, R dot B zero, yeah. So yeah, it's a bunch of zeros. Exactly. All right. So uh, this is not this is not a twist yet, but let's uh, write this as let's do that same trick again with the, uh, the the multiplying by identity. So let's do H dot W B H uh, B W. Then H W B R B one. Then we can see that this is a twist. And if we look at the definition here, we see that so there's no uh, no H uh, in front of it. So that means that K is the same as J. Uh, so it is expressed in base frame. So, and the base frame here was uh, W, W, B. And that's, that's the twist in the hat form, so the 4x4 four four matrix. And this part is just uh, RB transformed to world. So that's RW1. So now you have to, so, so for this formula to work, the twist needs to be expressed in base frame, in world frame, and also the, the, the point, the, the body fixed for point, even though it's fixed in the body frame, in, body, in uh, frame B, it needs to be expressed or change framed to uh, the world frame for this formula to work. So, so and that's, that's what those lines of code do. All right. So now we can just basically calculate the, if we, if we know the twist between two bodies, then we can always calculate the, the velocity of any point um, attached to the moving body with respect to the, the stationary body or the, uh, the, the base. 
and the stationary body doesn't have to be station sta stationary in the sense that it's like uh, inertial or whatever. Um, all yeah, all that matters is relative velocities here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so can we, or could you just possibly explain so uh, with the, what you did last, um, the twist uh, of the frame B with respect to the world expressed in world, the time derivative of the point in world frame is equal to the twist? Uh, is equal to the twist times this uh, this vector. Right, so uh, is there... Is, is there some, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I look at that and I kind of see the twist as like an operator. And yeah, 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 yeah. So, so well, let, let's just write it out as, as this again. Uh, so that's omega tilde w, w, b, v, w, w, b. Oh, and, uh, yeah, okay. With an zero, notation. zero times rw1 uh, so that ends up being omega w w b cross rw because that's what this hat thing does right mm -hmm. uh, plus v w w b and it's a vector so we need to not forget the, uh, the zero here but in code, of course, that's not computed for efficiency's sake. Uh, that, that, that one under the line is just to make it a four by one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that you can do this trick where you just uh, have a homogeneous trend. Like it's just a single matrix multiplication instead of a matrix multiplication and an addition. Yeah, okay. that's great. That makes sense. All right. Uh, then what's next on my list? Right, okay. Um, so the I'm going to have to erase a whole bunch of stuff. Fortunately, it would be nice to have this as like a side whiteboard or something. Mm -hmm. Smart board. Yeah, yes. board. Just flip back and forth. That would be nice, yeah. Make a little projector and higher LED and a Wiimote. No, no, let's. Smart board? Just a projector, yeah. higher LED and a Wiimote. We can do it. We keep waffling on what we want, so we never get anything. Yes. All right. It's it's expensive, right? Smart board. Uh, it's not terribly, but you have to use the smart board software. That's not good. Five grand per hour. All right. So now that we know everything about twists, <laughs> at least to start, um, how can we how can we apply this to robotics? So the thing with robotics is you have you have rigid bodies, which are like the links. Um, I mean, at least we consider everything to be rigid. Of course, there's also flexible stuff. And really everything is flexible, but we're not talking about that right now. Uh, but there's also joints. So really a mechanism, any, any robot uh, can be considered as rigid bodies, a whole bunch of rigid bodies connected by joints. Uh, that's how we consider it in code at least. Um, so what is a joint, really? Um, so you have a rigid body here, and then just very conceptually a joint and another rigid body. So let's call this A and B. So these are rigid bodies. Transform. And this is a joint. And, okay, yeah. Oh, All right, so so one thing, yeah, you said you said the transform. transform. Now you can be a little more specific if you it's want. Just to. just a rotation. So so one 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 thing that a joint does is it allows it allows uh, changes in in relative configuration, right? So if you if you just look at the the configuration level, there's going to be some uh, transform. Uh, so an H from uh, E to A. So let's let's call this this B thing. That's like the successor of the joint. Parent and child. And this is the predecessor. 
Yeah, and parent and child can, all, can all also be used. It's easier to spell. Sure. <laughs> this is the um, okay. yeah. Yeah, nomenclature from uh, uh, Roy Featherstone's book. Um, and that, that's also what's in, in code currently. So that's why I use this. Uh, so there's this, a joint has at any instant in time a certain transform that uh, describes the, uh, uh, the transform, the, yeah, the, the configuration of its successor with respect to the predecessor. And that's, that's a function of some joint angles f of q, where q is a, a vector in Rn, let's say. Um, really, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can have joints that have more than one uh, degree of freedom. Yeah. So this is this is one way to do it. Actually, uh, it might it might be better to write it like this. F, a little bit more general even, of a matrix Q, uh, where Q is just in R, well, n by m. Because uh, there are there are different types of joints. Uh, one one would be like a revolute joint, and there it makes just it makes sense to have Q the joint angle. So that's in uh, R1. Um, but you might also have, uh, so another, another very similar one is a, is a prismatic joint, which is just a translational joint. Uh, so there, Q is the, the, the joint translation. That's another one degree of freedom joint. Go to spherical angle. Yeah, yeah, so. Which would be R3, for example. Yeah, spherical, ball. so then it's like a ball and socket. And this is where it gets interesting, because you could use just three numbers. Uh, for example, yaw, pitch, roll. But you might end up with the same problems that we were having with. Uh, with any rotation matrix, really, or with any rotation described by only three numbers, which is that you can get uh, singularities, like gimbal lock. Uh, so really, for a spherical joint, to do it properly, you'd want to use either a quaternion, so uh, Q in R4, or a rotation matrix, R in R3 by 3 or really SO3 by 3, and this is like the group of quaternions. But, uh, uh, and then the same thing for, for, we even have like a six degree of freedom joint. And that's, that's not common when you just talk about robot arms, which are bolted to the table. But if we have a mechanism that's free floating, like a humanoid robot, then we can model that as there being a joint that has just, that's completely unconstrained. It can, move in any direction between the world and any part of the body. So either between the world and one of the feet, we usually do between the world and the pelvis, or sometimes with respect to the chest. Uh, doesn't matter so much, but that's another possibility. So then uh, Q, Q would be a transformation matrix. Or a transform. Basically, in uh, R four by four. Okay, so that's that's configurations, and um, this is usually really simple. So, uh, if you just use standard joints like like these these joints, uh, there's often a, a, there's always a, a simple formula to find uh, the transform based on the joint parameters or a joint um, configuration, uh, like the, the Q matrix here. Um, so for, for rotation, it's just, uh, for, for a revolute joint, it's just a rotation about a single axis. So 
There's just a standard formula for that, and it's really simple. Um, and then, if you know all of the local transforms, of course, you have uh, a, a third body C. Then you can just do the trick H A C equals H A B H B C uh, to get all the way from A to C. So, so really, kinematics is really simple in that sense. Uh, it's just a bunch of you construct a bunch of local transforms and then you can concatenate them all together. Uh, so yeah, that's configurations. Now let's look at velocities. Uh, can I erase this? Yeah. All right. So. If you have if you have a joint, uh, for example, a revolute joint, then you can only move in certain directions, right? You can't you can't just achieve any uh, transform, any h a to b or b to a, um, and that that also means that the the space of achievable velocities is limited, and it turns out that you can always write uh, the the twist from uh, of, of um, body B with respect to A in B as some matrix X B A B times a vector V uh, from, from A to B where this V uh, is in Let's call it RK. So it's kind of funny. Um, here we use here we use uh, an RK. Just, so this is a vector, whereas previously for the for the configuration we had this uh, Q in R n by m. So none of these numbers k, n, m have to be the same. Really, um, if you have a revolute joint, then it makes sense to use the joint angle as this Q, so that's just a scalar, and its derivative as the V. However, if you have if you have a um, a floating or a six degree freedom joint, then it makes sense to use a transform here as a Q, so that's a four by four matrix, but a twist here, so that's the the most concise um, description of, of velocity. As, as the V. So here we have R6 and here we have R4 by 4. Um, and so can you elaborate on that a little bit? Is it that velocities don't ever have singularity problems? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, uh, with velocities, the thing is it's always, it's always a local thing. So you're comparing the, the configuration one tiny instant in time ahead of uh, the current time to the, the uh, configuration at the lo at the current time, and as long as as long as the the motion of the object is is continuous or differentiable, I guess I should say, um, then then there's not, never going to be a huge jump in uh, in configuration during that time. So then you can just use a local representation. Uh, you can you can just do it with three numbers. Okay, um, so this X matrix, uh, that's called the motion subspace by some authors. Motion subspace. So that's the space uh, in which, in which uh, it's possible to achieve uh, relative motions, basically. Uh, so if uh, if you're trying to achieve a twist across a certain joint that's not in the column space of this matrix, then you can't do it. So it, it, it's really a restriction on the motion between two rigid bodies in terms of velocity. Um, yeah? 
What's the dimension? X is four so, by So this is a six by one. And this is uh, arc A, so that's arc A, uh, K by one. K by one. So this needs to be six by K. So it's always six rows, and then as many velocity degrees of freedom as there are uh, columns. As many columns as there are velocity degrees, degrees of freedom. And again, so this, this, the velocity degrees of freedom don't have to match the size of the, the thing that's used to describe the, the, uh, the configuration. And, and the velocity degrees of freedom are sort of what counts uh, when counting uh, joint degrees of freedom. Uh, so if, if you say you have a if, say you have a mechanism that has uh, a ball and socket joint in it and a revolute joint, then the degrees of freedom of the whole mechanism are going to be three plus one equals four, and not uh, three by three equals nine for the rotation matrix used to describe it, plus one equals ten. It's really the the velocity degrees of freedom that count. All right. Um, in general, this motion subspace could be dependent on the current configuration, uh, on Q. But for the most common types of joints, it's not. Is that because of singularities, or even more so? Um, it's, um, I, I forget what a, an example is of a joint where that happens, but really you shouldn't worry about it, because none of the normal joints you would use, like revolute joints, prismatic joints, ball and socket joints, or even uh, six degree of freedom joints have that problem. For all of those joints, the uh, motion, sub motion subspace is constant. I mean, a real simple example would be if you're looking at where the degree of freedom is the length of an actuator and it changes lever arm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like a, a four bar mechanism or something like that. There, that's probably a case where this X would change because then yeah. Dependent on the configuration, uh, you get either you get more or less motion of the end effector with respect, or w of this body B, with respect to A, for a certain joint velocity. When we reach a singularity of, well, no, you mean you just change in lever arms, right? So X would. But if your lever arm goes to zero, or your angle is, sure, it could be a problem. But but even if you didn't have singularities, it would change. Yeah. With pin joints and, and slider joints, it's constant. Yeah, so, so let's, do a, let's do a couple of examples. Uh, again, the revolute joints. All right, so let's, let's say that this V from A to B is just the, the joint uh, velocity. The joint, the derivative of that joint angle, let's say. Deriv of joint angle. So that would be like um, Q dot A to B. Uh, then what do you think uh, this X should be? First off, what is the size of X? What does it look like? Motion subspace. Six by one. Six by one, yeah. So X. is in uh, R uh, six by one, otherwise dimensions don't match. So you have a six, uh, or a one degree of freedom motion subspace, basically. Uh, one column motion subspace. And it looks like this. Uh, so let's, let's call the, the axis that you're rotating about A. And then uh, we have zero, three by one. Uh, sorry, it's columns. A zero uh, yeah, three by one. I think I messed up and did a three by one where I put one by three before. So uh, joint axis. So for example, if this A is one zero zero, then that means that we're rotating about the x-axis. 
in in uh, frame B's frame, in uh, in body B's uh, frame, so the frame after this joint, uh, which is constant, because if you're rotating about that axis, then the axis itself is not going to change in body frame. Uh, so that means that this x is going to stay constant. Um, and what ha what happens if you uh, post multiply a joint velocity, then you're going to get a twist across the joint. D, B, A, B equals uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 times this Q dot, D to A. So that's, that's basically just going to set the, the x component of angular velocity of the angular part of the twist to Q dot to DA. If you using A for B, you just think. Uh, yeah, it, it can be. It, it sort of depends on your definition. It if you use, of, yeah. Scales Q. If you if you uh, use radians per second for this, then it needs to be a unit vector. If you use uh, half radians per second, then be that's two. basically a, a two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In general, we always use unit vectors, of course, in our code because it makes way more sense. We translate. We don't translate from text to from from encoder text to. Yeah, we. I mean, like oh, after you get a Q in like radians. Yeah. 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 All right, and then uh, so a translational joint is basically the same thing, but then the translation axis shows up here, and the uh, angular part of the motion subspace is zero. Um, for a, a spherical joint, what do you think x would be? Or well, let, let's first make a, a proposition for what v is. V is omega. Yeah. So v. Uh, one thing that makes sense is just the angular velocity vector. So V, uh, what did I use? So V, just omega uh, of A with respect to V expressed in, oh, I screwed this up. Uh, of B with respect to A expressed in frame. You need to flip the VBA there. Yeah. Okay, so, so this is in R3. So we have three velocity degrees of freedom. So what do you think this matrix should look like then? Six by three. One, one, one. Six by three, right? Uh, identity, identity and zero. Yep. Yeah. And then zero. Zero. Because right. angular velocity is just the the first three rows in the <laughs> basically. Okay. All right, and then you can do the same thing for for a six degree of freedom joint. 6 DOF, where x, b, b is just i6, and the velocity vector is just the whole twist, <coughs> so just to stay in the same framework. Hmm. Taking that everything is defined in non units. What's that? Taking that everything is defined in radians on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but that, that you can say that after every sentence here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, all right. Can, yep. you, can you emphasize that that these work out as simple as they are because you have D and B the same? That, that, you're, that you're looking at the motion in body frame? Yeah. Expressed in body frame? Yeah, so, so for example, for, for this uh, revolute joint, since we're expressing this motion subspace in body frame, uh, the the joint axis or yeah yeah this joint axis A is not going to change 
-hmm. So, and that's a really nice property to have because um, because a lot of stuff drops out in, in uh, later equations. Yes. Yeah, that that and also all the compli well, the thing that's typically complicated with twists is uh, is the you know the whole rod passing through something type description, but since it's expressed in and body frame are the same you don't have that you just you're just saying that's a pure velocity it's not a weird twist velocity it just is the velocity yeah it's the velocity the, like the linear <coughs> part is the velocity of the origin of frame b right. so that's that's a really nice thing to do. Uh, so one one note um, what we do in code always is we have we have these joints that we create and that have a, a frame before joint and a frame after joint. And the frame before joint, if you want to keep the joints in code as simple as possible, the, the frame before joint really needs to be here. So it have, has to have its origin here. Otherwise, you'd have to uh, do some more stuff, basically. And then the frame after joint is right after the joint. So if this is a revolute joint, the only thing that happens between these two frames is the, the rotation due to this joint being there. Um, and then you might have like another frame that's the, the body, the real body fixed frame as in the, the center of mass frame mm -hmm. of frame B. Uh, but in order to get the, the twist of the center of mass frame with respect to the center of mass frame of this, which you might need, for example, for doing inverse dynamics, uh, then you'd have to do a change frame after you calculate uh, the twist. So, so you have to, since, since this frame, the frame right after the joint is not moving with respect to the COM frame, you can just add zero. But then usually algorithms require stuff to be expressed in either body frame or base frame, so you have to also do a, a so you can do the same yeah. for the other for the before joint frame, right? Uh, because the body or the yeah. body fr base frame. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you have a COM frame here, like the COM frame of frame A, that's not moving with respect to the frame just before the joint. Yeah. So you can do the same trick. So what you're saying though is, with all the stuff you have written on the board here, with A and B are the frame before and the frame after joint, which are typically. Yeah, you can just use center of mass frames, mm -hmm. but it's so convenient to just create extra frames in our framework mm -hmm. that it's it's uh, nicer to just keep the joints simple. Because otherwise, joints would also have to know about their offsets to parent or something, and now really they only have to know about the frame before them. But for twist, it doesn't really matter. So, th so the, the frame the frame after joint can be used to both uh, orient the next uh, joint as well as translate it. So really, it's, it's exactly okay, what you so, want. Okay. But back to what you have on the board again. Yep. So with the X, the big the, uh, motion subspaces, yep. these, what we have written here is true, whether the joints are coincident, at, at whether the frames are coincident right at the joint, or if they happen, they just have to be any body fixed frame. Yeah. And these, these definitions are still valid. Yeah. But where we typically use them is yeah, you just I, think, I think if you use any body fixed frame, uh, then the the motion subspaces of most of the of, of all of these joints are going to end up being constant. Yeah, and and exactly what you have written. Yeah. yeah. The only difference might be if the uh, yeah you have to. It, it's nice to put the axis in some logical frame with respect to the to the axis. So you have a one zero zero or zero one zero, and if it's somewhere rotated, you have a right. well, the three joint, element. The joint axis has to be in body fixed in the body frame. Yeah, but if the body frame is rotated with respect to the axis, your mm -hmm. axis becomes weird. It doesn't become nice x y or zero. Yeah. So it's yeah, just yeah. more convenient yeah. to do it like that. Okay. All right. Oh, and uh, so I called this the motion subspace, and this is just the joint velocity vector. All right, so let's uh, do some coding again.
Uh, the reference frame creation. Yeah, let's. I'm just going to put this in a method. Yeah, it's, it's an object. Yeah, it's a random generator, really. Yeah. Since you're passing the same random to each yeah. thing that's making a new random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it, every time you call uh, random dot max double, that's a, a method that's being called underneath here somewhere. Okay. It, it creates a new pseudo random number. Uh, okay, so let's do twist tests. Now let's do let's create some joints. Um, so let's first create a single revolute joint. Uh, revolute joints, joint one equals new revolute joint. Uh, joint one. All right, so we need a predecessor, a before joint frame, and a joint axis. So this predecessor, that's just the rigid volume before the joint, right? So let's create that. This new rigid body. Let's call that um, A. And root body frame is going to be frame A. joint frame and let's just make that be frame A so oops. so the uh, uh, that basically means that the center of mass is uh, at the same location and yeah that the center of mass is at the same location as this joint and but by the way, really, uh, in order to really use this whole rigid body thing, you'd also have to specify mass properties and stuff. So there's like uh, predecessor dot set. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh right. Uh, sorry. This is the constructor for for doing a root rigid body. So you have this is really the the world. Uh, so it, it doesn't have inertial properties.